As we came around to fall on the farm, I thought I'd do my future self a favor and get out here in the marsh and harvest some of the fiber plants that Neil and Jelsey taught us about when they were here on the farm this summer. So with a few simple tools, I set about getting after this willow that had grown up in an area that last year was the pig pen. So this whole area was clear cut and then this willow grew back. I got in there with the loppers and cut the clusters and stacked them up. Spent about half an hour or so in this little patch here. And these are particularly prized because they tend to have very long stems without branches in this first year of regrowth. Now there are definitely some in here that have some branching, but I have a use for those too. After that, we went to that dog bane patch that Chelsea was talking about. You would harvest in the fall. Yeah, and then just come in and you cut it nice and low. So that's what I said about doing, is harvesting these at ground level. And there's a, a good patch of them down there. I decided to go ahead and prune off what branches there were along with the seed pods right there where it's growing so that it would have a chance to reseed itself. Got those all bundled up. And then set about getting this tule reed. Now it was a, a perfect day to do this because there was still a little bit of ice in the shallow waters where this grows so I didn't have to worry about sinking into the mud which one normally would trying to get this particular plant. So easy to walk around and get a good grip of it. And we got that bundled up too. And there they are along with the pile of willow. And so now it's just a matter of going through all this willow and pruning off whatever branches there were. And you pretty good work if you can get it hanging out in the sunshine on a fall afternoon, drinking coffee, listening to music. As I said, some of this is not really appropriate for basketry, but I'm going to do some fencing projects and some furniture projects and you know, having a, a wide variety of this, even if it's not of the greatest quality, is going to pay off when I get to those projects. Of course, I had a lot of help. The girls all had to come by and see what I was doing. Once I got it all trimmed, I put it all in this barrel and tried to shake them down so that all the butt ends were on the bottom of the barrel. And this way I can grade the sizes by pulling the highest tips and getting those out of the barrel. And this way I went through the entire lot of it and broke it down into about six inch gradations of, of length. After I got through the high stuff, some of this is eight feet tall and it got considerably easier. And there they all are, laid out according to size, smallest to largest, about three foot on the short end to those eight foot ones at the end there, which will be great for fencing and furniture and things like that. It's just a matter of bundling them all up. Lola's back there supervising and coming up here I barely survive a chicken stampede. close but got them all bundled up so now they'll dry nice and straight when it comes time to use these they'll just have to be rehydrated and mellowed in tarp and then they can be worked into useful objects uh, gather those up with the tule and the dog bane and put it up in the rafters in the barn no chickens were harmed in the filming of this video in fact, I spoiled them with some black soldier fly larvae from Grubterra. They intercept 
organic waste from the waste stream and feed it to black soldier flies to produce these. So get about 20 pounds of waste out of the landfill for every pound of these grubs. And the chickens sure love them. They've got a lot more calcium than mealworms. And in the wintertime, it sure helps them. So you can go to the link in the description, use code GRUB10 for 10% off of any of their products over there. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to see what I do with all this good material we've got stored up now.